Division 2 action now, week 10, the last week for both these players. Uh, Tyler Adams at the top of the screen and Paul Reynolds at the bottom. Uh, neither player can qualify for finals this season, I believe, so this is kind of just a, a game for fun. Uh, I have had a look in editing and we can expect a few spicy brews, particularly in the modern contest. Uh, this was recorded by Paul, so we're looking at Paul's hand. Paul has played the entire season on um, on the Taking Turns deck in Modern, so he's changed decks for, for the final round. Tyler has experimented with a few brews. It looks like Danto Vanguard. This was pretty popular uh, previously in Standard in a kind of blue-white auras deck. It's kind of dropped off a little bit. There's a turn three Steel Leaf Champion, a 5-4. So a lot of power on the board already from Paul. Six power on turn three. Okay, so champion of the flame. So that this is a. I mean, I think this is a. I've seen this brew a few times. Nathan Nathan Blewett has showed me a brew involving this, uh, particularly with the Magic Nineteen cards that are going to be coming out. There's a lot of uh, build arounds with um, equipment. No, sorry, not equipment enchantments. Not sure if that's what Tyler is doing, but he's down to 12 pretty quickly. He sees 8, 9 damage on the board there. So he's a bit of a problem there with the resolution on uh, Paul's recording. We don't get to see the whole lot. Bumping up the energy here. I'm not really sure why he's playing energy. I don't see any evidence of what he needs. So, five, there's eight there. Everyone's getting in. Now, Champion can just get straight in front of Animal Elves here. And we're going to go to game two because uh, that would have left Tyler without a board and staring down four lethal threats. So, pretty fast game one and standard. Well, I think this is the second season for Paul. Tyler's had a much improved season uh, over his se season before, so um, from by all accounts, I think he's enjoyed himself this time. Uh, and we'll so here's Danitha Capuchon. So this is the one that gets costs one less for auras and inch equipments. So I'm, I'm guessing if Tyler's playing this now, he's certainly going to be exploring it come Magic 19. Nature's Way. Ooh, interesting. This Greenbelt Rampager. He kind of had a, it was a flash in the pan and standard when energy was a thing and then it just disappeared. But it looks like it's um, back with a vengeance. Again, we can't, this is kind of frustrating. This is Paul's recording, so we can't see the power of these creatures. Uh, so that's a 2-2, two, two. I think the, it's going to become a 4-2 and plus whatever the, the enchantment gives it. But I, I'm just not seeing the point of the Greenbelt Rampager here. Since, since the banning of, um, I forget the name of the card, the one that gives you an energy and lets you search for a land for one mana. Since that got banned, uh, it's just not really viable for the Rampager because it just uh, doesn't come down soon enough. But here's 12 damage coming across. You can see Tyler's on 23. He goes to 11, so there's actually lethal on board. He needs to find something right now. He's only got one card in hand, so he's going to... The Vanguard drops Paul to 6. I think if he's planning a double chump block here, then Paul's got him covered. Because he's can he'll just blossom in defense, whatever. And you can see there's a Gelter coming next turn as well. Surely you keep that on top. Yes. Yeah. So that here you can just whatever doesn't get blocked, give it the blossom in defense. And I think that could be lethal. Seven. Oh, okay, we're gonna have another turn. So five. So it's gonna be lethal next turn. So it's gonna be a pretty. Or can the Vanguard get the win here? It's got flying. Tyler's going to need to pump it somehow. See if he's drawn a pump spell or not. 
because it does have four so anything that gives it plus two will, will get him the win it doesn't so we're going to modern as you can see the birds of paradise uh, fate stitcher probably gives this deck away uh, just guy sentency combo the only deck i'm aware of that plays fate stitcher you can see the ascendancy combo has to play the birds of the green splash because it needs the mana ramp and also because it needs the sort of cheap cheap characters that it can boost up with the combo uh, combo triggers not really sure what engineered explosives is doing in the main deck that's a curious one although it is powerful when um, Paul's playing four colors there's Mado on the other side for Tyler and we see a blood ghast I don't know if I don't know the deck well enough the that one that's popular at the moment Mado Hollow one I don't believe they play normally play white splash so I'm not really sure what Tyler's up to on the other side so the, there's glittering wish that's kind of a giveaway as well and there's the piece that he needs so here we go just to have a look at Jeskai, this was huge back in the day every time he plays non-creature spell on tap all creatures um, and then draw a card, discard a card, so it's a filter as well the, of course something like the birds of paradise is going to give him the mana so he's got a whole heap of one one mana cantrips here so he just keeps cantripping again and again and again um, So you can play Engineered Explosives, once you, you can play it for zero if you wanted to, just to get the trigger. So there, there's two more triggers that will untap those two. You can see he's still going, he's... Gonna play Cerulean Wisps. And the, the idea is, because it's a loot effect, you can loot away the cards that you don't need, and then find the ones that you do. Uh, but you, you need the mana open, so at, at this stage, Fate Stitcher, yeah, Tyler knows the writing's on the wall, so we're going to go to game two. The idea is he taps one for, um, he has a whole heap of one and two mana spells in his deck. He taps one for Birds of Paradise, and he uses Fate Stitcher to untap Bird of Paradise and taps for the second mana, so he can basically play any spell in his deck. And then he just keeps doing it over and over again until he pumps one of those two creatures to a massive, like, 20-20, probably the birds because it's got evasion flying and then he swings for lethal and Tyler's goal oh, just as I was going to say in his colors but he's played an overgrown tomb so he's on four colors as well so here's a sylvan carrier this is a mana accelerator because uh, it untaps with the Jeskai ascendancy as well but it has defender so it can't actually be the, the lethal killer grizzly salvage Reveal five cards, put the rest in your grave. You can see he's up to nine. Some graveyard shenanigans that we was there was no suggestion of this in game one, so he's got a good chance of you know, jumping pool here. Now you collected brutality, the, the noble hierarch, because as I said, the carrier did cannot kill you. He needs to get the f fate stitcher into the grave. So he, at, at the moment he's just aggressively digging for a, for a Jeskai Ascendancy. Leyline of Sanctity, wait, he's going to take it, but I, I th it might be a bit slow. Um, I don't know if he knows what he's up against at this stage. We don't know what he's up against. Now we do. Soul Flyer. Every, the card, and here it is here, so you, you delve, and whatever character, oh, I had that too fast, there we go. Whatever characteristic, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, End of destructible lifelink reach etc etc of the cards that you delve soul flyer gets that as well so you can see it's got flying and hex proof so um this is a card that since it was spoiled and fate reforged i think everybody's trying to get it to work in one way or another but um never really took off here's an abundant growth I suspect here he, he's getting plenty of cantrips but he's not finding what he needs
He has managed to resolve Leyline, but I suspect um, Leyline will be coming out because. Yeah, he, he, he's just saying he did made a mistake there for some reason it sacked Leyline. No, sorry, not Leyline, the gemstone mine. He still has an opt, so he can still do something, but he needs to kind of do it fast. I believe... Or, or Loloth Troll, you can discard and get plus one, but Tyler's only got one card in hand, so he's not going to be able to present lethal next turn. Just checking what's in there. Noxious Revival, nothing doing, so he'll... Serum Visions, he's digging very aggressively for this. Okay, Glittering Wish can find it. The problem he has here, you can see he's got the slight of hand. He, he needs to keep cantrips as well, because one of the problems that this deck can run into is it plays the Jeskai Ascendancy, and then it, um, it plays the Jeskai Ascendancy, but then it just runs out of cards, so you, you, you need a, because you can whiff, you can, if you're down to one card in hand, you cast it, and Ascendancy, oh, so you have to be two cards, discard a card, draw a card, if it's a land, it's boom, gone. So you need to chain a few together. As for Tyler's side, I'm not really sure what his deck does once he's played the Soul Flyer. You can see six is lethal next turn. I think, and, and the Soul Flyer's got flying, so Bird of Paradise will have to be a chump blocker. He's got another bird in hand, and there's the Ascendancy. So can he do it? Yeah, he can. He's got a sleight of hand. So now draw and discard, and he'll untap so he can play the Nagging Thought. Oh, ever up Decay, forget that, we're going to game three. Uh, he, he's going to be able to find another one of Glittering Wish. But he, can, yeah, he needs the Birds of Paradise to to chump block the Soul Fly here. Glittering Wish will get a, another ascendancy out of his sideboard. Uh, but actually, he's just dead. Tyler can just discard a card and make Lolith Troll a three, three power here. And that's exactly what he's going to do. So we're going to game three in modern. Uh, that looks like a pretty good hand there for Paul. He's going to be able to go off very quickly. Possibly turn one, two, turn three. I'd be curious to see if he wants to play the ascendancy, uh, how he wants to play it, because he's seen Abra up to K. The next land from Tyler has to be a green source for that to be a problem. Yes, yeah, so he's going to take the more measured approach here. So he can do it next turn, because he's got the Serum Visions. Does he get the green source? Yes, he does. So Grizzly Salvage. I think if he, yeah, I was about to say, I think if he taps out here, he's in big trouble. see how this plays out so he's got an abundance of lands here yeah <laughs> Tyler's like no nah, I can't beat that you can see he's got no cards in hand so we're going to legacy uh, Paul looking to finish his season with a sweep he's played this deck um, I, I call it blue black dreadnought he's probably as I say every week he's probably told me five times already what it's called but I forget and here's a turn one chalice. Well, <laughs> this could be game two on Legacy already. No Dreadnoughts, and no Brainstorms, and no Stifles. Uh, he does have the Torpor Orb, and, he, and he, the second card he has is the... It's a double black that he can play as well. But this is looking pretty ugly already.
Here's the top orb, so... Blue-black has no way to get rid of enchantments. Oh, sorry, no way to get rid of artifacts. So, except for bouncing them, which I doubt he's got anything to bounce with. So he's gonna... This is If this is for two... No, I can't see. I think it's for one. I was gonna say, if he did that for two, then he would have locked him out. That's the card I was talking about, Hunted Horror. But as you can see, Paul needs double black for that. I think this is kind of hopeless, this situation. Uh, Tyler's just on the hunt for another threat, which will lock them out. You can see he doesn't even swing. He's going to keep the spirit guide back now to check the confidant. He's in no rush. Limdul's Vault. Uh, I think he's looking... What is he looking for here? Basic of black. So he's digging deep. Where is it? Still not... Does he even have a second basic swamp in the deck? He's down to nine. You can see... Okay, Eater of Days comes in. It's a nine-eight. Uh, well, he's going to kill the Confidant there. So Tyler on the lookout now for Ensnaring Bridge. Otherwise, we're going to game two. What just happened? I'm not really sure. Sakin will get finished off. Magus of the Moon, but this is not, suddenly it's not looking very good for Tyler. One hit away from lethal. Yep, yeah, we're going to game two. Tyler's seen enough. You can see the wipe away has come in. And he does have a force of will there as well. Lotus Petal will be able to fix that minor issue. And no turn one chalice, so this could be a much better turn for him. Oh, sorry, a much better play. Now we're going to see the chalice for one. This has to get force of will to get. Uh, Paul's looking for a stifle or a torpor orb here. Interesting that Tyler there with the thespian stage, so I wonder if he's just put the Dark Depths combo in here. Um, Paul's looking for a... Well, here's Tassiga making an appearance in Legacy. That's quite an aggressive uh, limb duels right there. That's got both pieces that he needs. He's going to have another look. Not really sure what he's looking for here. <laughs> yeah, Tyler says, how is that card not banned? Uh, I have to agree, like it just seems way too powerful. Looking at is basically scrying five cards and only costing yourself a life. But in the meantime, how does he deal with a Tassiga, a four-five powered Tassiga? How does he deal with this guy as well? Uh, for on the other side, Magus of the Moon. He'll just bounce the Magus back. And there's one of the pieces, the Torpor Orb. And a Rebel Master. Well, this is going to be interesting because he can probably hit Tyler once or twice more. And then the Rebel Master just takes over the game. Except for if you got a 9-8. So I was a spirit guide. I'm not sure what he's looking for here. Pia and Karen. 
Okay, this is going to give him some blockers. Oh, Torpor Orb stifles the Pier and Karen. That, I, I forgot about that. So it's just a 2-2 two, two for 4. thing actually is it a oh and snaring bridge how is he going to beat that now he, we've seen one wipe away already how does he beat in snaring bridge he needs a second wipe away I don't think he can beat that though I think we're going to game three one of my pet cards to hate and snaring bridge is going to get the job done here for Tyler and now he just has to keep pinging him with uh, Chandra. It's a seven turn clock, but I don't think there's anything that Paul can do here. You can see his mana base is quite greedy as well. Uh, just to rub it in, we'll have a Blood Moon as well. Uh, just, just a question of how much more of this Paul wants to take. See the, we can't see the chalices, they're locked out. Down to eight, four turn clock. There's a Hazaret in there as well. Hazaret can also ping him for two. Yeah, he's seen enough. So we're gonna go to game three. So, we've seen now in both Modern and Legacy that Tyler's managed to force a game three in both instances. He couldn't get it done in Modern. Can he do it in Legacy? Okay, so we've got a, an interesting play there to stifle the Chrome Mox. Denying him double red. Okay, so he's going to exile his spirit guide anyway. Does this get Force of World here? You can see Echoing Truth, so... Doesn't have the stifle now for that Dreadnought. So two, he's got access to the mana though. There's Hunted Horror. So he's gone the aggressive route, two Dark Confidants. He's got all the pieces, he just needs a Torpor Orb or a Stifle. Well, if he gets a Stifle, he needs another land here. That's a suicide, I think, for Chandra. What's she gonna do? Gonna tick up, digging for something. He could actually play out Tassiga here as well. Chandra down to two, so no killing of creatures this time. So what's he gonna do here? He's I think I think he's pretty desperate for an ensnaring bridge here. Koth is going to be handy. But Koth will get outclassed by Tassiga. Rabble Master. So he's starting to get the pieces together. Because Koth and Chandra is going to be able to... Oh, there's a wipe away. That's what he was after. I think he keeps that as insurance. Koth was, um, and Chandra together are going to be able to add mana. But you can see Tyler's only got one card in hand. And now he's got the Dreadnought, so he can stifle the Dreadnought trigger. So this is pretty ugly, this is the match right here. Tyler needs to find... Tyler needs to find Force of Will right, right next turn, or he's dead. Chandra down.
He can, it, but he cannot find the force of will. He can only find a peer and Kieran, and it's going to be countered. 